Hello again everyone, Sokka here and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. It's been quite some time since we've been in Kerbal, since the last time we were doing the missions here. And with the new 1.1 patch, we, are, we have the ESA collaboration missions. And today we are going to do Rosetta. In partnership with the ESA, we are going to intercept Comet 67P and land a probe on it. We will be asked to do the same. So, we will be reaching an inclined orbit over Kerbin, get within 50,000 kilometers of the comet, 5 kilometers of the comet, zero out velocity with the comet, test the science equipment, and attach to the comet. It's an intermediate difficulty. Uh, looking at Bepi Colombo, that is advanced, so this looks to be a little bit simpler than getting out to Moho. Uh, but we are going to try Rosetta today, so let's get started. All right, so here we are on the launch pad, ready to go. We've created the mission that challenges you to replicate the Rosetta mission, the first spacecraft to orbit a comet, and the first to deploy and land a probe on a comet surface. You'll need to get to orbit before planning out your transfer trajectory. In this case, you should reach an incline orbit to make it more efficient to depart to intercept the comet. You will still need to do some inclination changes to align with the comet as course correction maneuvers later. All right, so let's take a look at the map and see what kind of inclined orbit we need. And we're actually right there in the launch window and we need to launch east southeast a little bit so we don't need to go straight east so looking at our nav ball we probably want to launch right there at the uh, between 90 and 135 uh, should get us fairly close so now that we know where we're heading we're going to SAS on go full throttle and three two one let's go <laughs> So 86K, we're a little bit off, and we need 85K. All right, let's go ahead and then add a maneuver node. And just speed up until we can circularize. It's not on the right inclination, but we can do a little bit of inclination adjustment when we get there. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be a little bit off and 1400 meters a second. So that's going to be eating into our second stage. So hopefully that is okay. All right, so our next stage is actually the fairing. All right, fairing off, we are out of the atmosphere. All right, so we've got a one minute burn time. Let's go for T minus 30. All right, solar panels are extended. Let's make sure that we keep our electric charge right on the dot and accelerate on the maneuver node. And this will use up all of our fuel and then we can uh, do the last little bit of staging here. Luckily our probe core is smart enough to hold right on the maneuver node. So not a whole lot of work for us to do as far as keeping this thing in line. I like the look of that engine. That is really, really cool for sure. All right, getting ready to stage. This stage should drop back into the atmosphere just fine. And waiting for that fuel cutoff. And... Skabooski! All right, off we go. And just uh, 16 seconds of burn time a little bit here. Getting our inclination up. And we didn't exactly hit the... Uh, the orbit that they want right on the bat. So it's going to be a little bit of maneuver finagling, but 0.9 second difference there. All right. Do a little bit of time warp jump to get our uh, spacecraft nice and settled. So let's see where we are working here. All right, so it looks like we're going to have to do an inclination change about right here or so. Let's bring that right down. Something like so. And then of course we can adjust the apoapse and periapse as required. So that's going to be 132 
meters per second, only an eight second burn. So I will see you when we're on the other side. All right, getting ready for the burn on the dark side of the planet. We've got 496 electric charge. So we should be able to complete this maneuver and then get right back to the other side of the planet. There we go. And hold that maneuver as best we can right on the dot. And then throttle down a bit and skadoosh. 0 0.03. Uh, meters per second will turn SAS off and luckily that did recharge us just a bit all right so we're going to be coming around at 71k let's go ahead and drop our Apple apps down to the see so this is an 85 by 85 orbit indeed it is all right let's go ahead to our parry add a maneuver and lower this down to about 85,000 all right, one second is all we need. All right, so that's 88. Let's actually go retrograde then. And sort of do this by hand. We're at 88,000 kilometers, and we need to get down to 85. So this is just going to be a little bit of a squirt. 600, 400, pretty much bang on. 85K. And then we'll need to get around to the other side as well and bring this uh, periaps up to 85. All right, 10 seconds away from our Apple apps. Let's go ahead and just increase our throttle a bit until we see 85K. 84, four. 85 so 85.2 by 85. Congratulations on reaching a good low carbon orbit. Now plot your maneuver carefully to intercept the comet. You can intercept the comet anywhere in its orbit, but it is definitely easier at certain points. For the most efficient intercept, try to match the comet's Apple apps with your transfer. This gives the lowest relative intercept speed when you arrive and reduces the delta V need to expend on approach. Try to save all the fuel you can to allow further maneuvers near the comet. For this common intercept, we're only asking you to do a direct transfer. The real mission, use three Earth flybys and a single Mars flyby to help save on fuel, and also to gather additional data by passing asteroids en route to capture. All right, so let's go ahead on out and see if we can see the comet in question. So there it is, set as target. So we want to reach it out at its Apple apps. And looking at that, we're pretty much bang on as far as the inclination change. So we need to make that maneuver now. So basically what we need to do is burn out here and then increase our Apple apps all the way up as much as we can. So we are going to deep space today, adding a maneuver. And then just increasing that Apple apps up. And let us actually adjust our launch time here. We want to head pretty much straight out and then lower that Apple apps as best we can. It's actually looking like it's coming up fairly quick. Yeah, we may have to make another pass. Let's just bring that right down. All right, so close intercept separation, 478,000 kilometers. We can try that. All right, so this is going to be a really good approach. We are 21,000 kilometers away separation with uh, 1,900 meters a second uh, expended. So let's go ahead and SAS maneuver node on. It's going to be 1 minute 34 seconds, so we're looking at... Uh, what is that? Uh, 45, 47 seconds T minus. So let's go ahead and fast forward until we get to T minus 47 seconds. Just bringing that right in. All right, 51 seconds. Three, two, go. I skipped one, but that's fine. So we are going to burn all but 100 meters a second in this stage. So we will actually squeeze a little bit out of it. So that's pretty good. So I will go ahead and complete this maneuver and be right back. All 
All right, coming up on cutoff here. Only 200 meters a second to go, and then we can fine tune when we get out there uh, in space and try to really bring that approach down. 2.7 meters a second. Yeah, this thing, uh, the probe core might suffer a little bit on the, um, on the maneuver, trying to get this thing set without that gimbling engine, but 1.4 meters a second. There we go, 0.1 meters a second SAS off. We'll do the cheeky little stability time warp and see where that brings us here. So close approach is 371,000 kilometers. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, let's try some prograde maneuver and then just see if that lowers that intersect. Yes, it did indeed. Just a little bit. 252, 169, 123, 56K, 38K, and then 54. So we got fairly close on that approach. But uh, we will be going into deep space here soon. Uh, what I'll do is I will wait until we're like halfway around our orbit and do a mid-course correction. So let's uh, go ahead and then fast forward and I will see you for the mid-course correction. All right, you're on your way. Your next goal is to get within 50,000 kilometers of the target. If it's near the sun, this will put you in or close to its coma. It's gonna be long voyage, but we have faith in you. And right now we are looking at a separation of 38,000 kilometers. So we are already on our way as far as our checklist is concerned to get within 50K of the comet. Then we need to get to 5K. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do our mid-course correction uh, about right here in one year and uh, we'll see if we can get just a little bit closer all right everyone welcome back we are one year and 38 days into the mission there is the sun looking really small and uh, our comet is way out here uh, somewhere we lost sight of it a bit but where we are on the map we are about halfway between Kerbin and our expected rendezvous. We're pointed prograde and I've reduced the thrust on this Rosetta rocket down to five. So just a little bit of um, thrust can sort of get us where we need to do. No, we don't want to set ELU as a target. So on prograde, we we're actually uh, increasing our separation. So we don't want to do that. We'll wait until it set, uh, settles down a bit and then go retrograde until we see those numbers drop. We're at 38.3K. Dropping that right down to 37. Right down to 36. Right down to 35. Let's give it a little bit more thrust. 33. All right. And now the, the numbers were starting to slow down. As we're thrusting, we're not getting as much of an impact. So we got down to 32,283 kilometers. Now let's go normal and anti-normal to look at our inclination just to make sure uh, that we aren't going to go over it or under it. Uh, you can see the ascending node is 3.8 degrees off, but that's the overall orbit and not our meeting orbit. So we'll see if that 32 goes down and indeed it does. So down to 29,000. And still 65 meters a second left in this uh, this stage, so we're getting a lot out of it. Down to 22k, down to 20k, nice, a little bit more thrust. Yeah, we're getting a lot of speed out of this thing. Down to 10k, 9k. Are we gonna get within a million? We may. And that would really help out for sure. Okay, it went up to 3.3. All right, so last thing we'll do is go radial in and radial out to sort of fine-tune our approach but I don't think it's going to do much but we still got 63 meters a second in this tank oh okay so uh, yeah radial out is doing some stuff we're down to 3,000 2,000 1,000 oh so yeah that's really close we are at 1.822 thousand kilometers and that is a really good short approach um, that's going to be within, yeah, our 50,000 kilometers of the comet, and even the 5K. We're, we're within 5,000, oh, 5,000 kilometers, not, 
Yeah, 1,800 kilometers. Hey, that might not be too bad. All right, so we are going to uh, speed up just a bit till we get to, say, right about here and then see what the game has for us. So I will be right back. All right, so still a 400 meter a second difference. We are closing in. Uh, distance is 265 uh, million meters. And we're just going to fast forward that until we get a little bit closer here. That distance is closing, and once we get within 50k, um, we should get a little pop-up from Mission Control. So we are catching it, slowly and surely, 400 meters a second difference. Uh, that should be more than enough. That will leave us with about 1,000 meters a second to uh, land on the comet. And yeah, closing that gap quick, fast, and in a hurry. Don't want to overshoot this, but we are 100 million and getting down to 50 million here. 80, 70, 60. Getting real close now, almost that 50 million mark. And there we go. Now that you've gotten in range of the comet and are being treated to the amazing display of its coma and tail, or not if, not if you're too far from the sun, please close within five kilometers to get a really good look at the nucleus. So let's go ahead and do such things as these. Uh, so that is retrograde to the comet. So it should be coming up. Wherefore art thou? Surely. I mean, within 50,000 meters of the comet, although, like it said, we may be too close to the sun. But we did see it on approach. Let me take a look and see if I can find this thing. We are under its orbit, so it should be out here on the galactic plane. But I'd be danged if I see it. All right, let's go ahead and close that to less than uh, 5,000 meters. All right, going anti-normal here now that we are uh, closing up and dropping that separation down a bit. Uh, I changed our engine to 5 on the thrust just to make sure that we don't overshoot in case something bad happens. But yeah, this, uh, this fine tuning here seems to be doing a lot for us as far as our inclination goes. We're almost less than a 900k, 800k. Almost down to 700k, 600k. Yeah, that uh, ascending node is definitely dropping. 500k, 400k, 300k, 200k. Okay, 100k. Yeah, getting that down. Oop. Okay, so we reached our inclination. Now let's go radial in and radial out and see if we can fine tune that approach just a bit. We're at 100K and we need to get down to 5,000, so 5K. And that's not the way to go. Let's go radial in and pull that orbit in a bit and make sure that we get this down to 5K. Let the spacecraft settle a little bit before we go all ham bone on it and just bring that right in, 90, 89, 80, 70, 60, 50, nice, 40, 30, and it kind of looked like it's going to slow down a bit. There, yeah, 29.1K. All right, do we go prograde and retrograde? See if we can uh, speed up or slow down relative to our target and see if that does anything for us. No, that was definitely wrong. Okay, let's go retrograde and see if we can slow down a bit. Get this within the 5K we need. And still got 47 meters a second left in that uh, bottom stage, so doing really good there. 25K, 24, and it decided to slow down a bit. So what we can do is 24K should be good enough to slow down with. Um, and then we'll slowly make our way, uh, to 5k if we can. All right. So, um, I went back to normal to try to increase our orbit and there we go. Oh man, that was like bang on 5k. 
So it's not going to take much finagling to get down to 5k. Uh, and when we do, we'll just fast forward right up to close approach uh, a few minutes out and uh, put on the brakes essentially. So I will see you then. All right, coming in close here, we're at 500,000 meters and we need to get within 5,000. Our uh, intersect is 4.7K. So we will be uh, dropping in within 4,000 meters. Uh, now that we're under 100,000 meters, we'll slow down time acceleration a bit. Looks like we are two minutes away from close intercept. And once we get down to one minute, I'll go real time so we don't overshoot. All right, one minute away from closest intercept. And we should get notification pretty soon that we're ready to go. And funny, I do not see this comet at all. Like, I don't even see, like, the target marker. Let's go point the spacecraft to the target and see exactly where we're coming up from. Because I don't even see the, uh, the yellow bracket of the target. So, yeah, apparently the comet is... There it is. Comet Ahoy! All right, so we'll go retrograde to the target. Once we get within that close approach, uh, the Kerbal should pop up and tell us that we are getting really close and then we will throw on full power and try to get this thing to come to a complete stop at least that is the hope and goal there we go full power and retrograde it out lower your velocity relative to the comet yeah i know target mode we are at full power comet is about to get right into the the sun right there and looks about 28 seconds left of throttle. You can use the target mode. Hope you've saved enough fuel. We should have. Granted, the target is uh, speeding away from us a bit. But if we zero out relative speed to the comet, we can just slowly catch back up to it. 200 meters a second. We're at 1,300. So that, yeah, that should leave us 1,000. So we should be okay. So I will go ahead and stop my speed relative to the comet and then point to it and uh, get on the gas just a little bit. All right, zeroed it out. Scientists will be using Rosetta spacecraft to observe the comet for years. There's no need to duplicate that work, but please test at least one science experiment to confirm Rosetta transmission hardware is still functional. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, what kind of science experiment do we have? That's the grabber. Oh, here we go. Log the grab data. Transmit the data. Upload the data, and there we go. Now for the most groundbreaking part of the mission, we want you to detach the Phyli lander and use its grapple to attach to the comet's surface. The instruments inside of the probe will give us a unique look at the surface of the comet. Uh, let us arm. And uh, I don't know exactly. Okay, so we, we can do the heavy lifting with this part. And then we detach this and finish up the job. All right, I see, I see, I see. All right, so let's go to the target and get back out to the comet. Let's speed up a bit and say do 100 meters a second, something like that. We probably shouldn't be too overzealous. Let's go 40 meters a second and then we'll just glide in the rest of the way so it's gonna be a slow and steady process to get caught back up to the comet right cha uh, but when we get into our parking orbit then there shouldn't be nothing left uh, to detach this little guy and then connect back to the comet so I will go ahead and cruise and uh, see you for um, capture all right comet in sight pulling up to it 
We only have 39 meters a second to kill off, which should be fairly easy to do. Hopefully we don't clip our solar panel. There's 15 meters a second. We're coming up on the daylight side, which is pretty cool stuff. All right, come to a complete stop, please. 2.6 meters a second. 0.1 meter a second. So that should be fine. We are parked right under this kidney bean uh, sort of thing. F5 for safety, just in case. And uh, let's go ahead then and I guess detach, question mark? All right, so there we are, SAS on. And this may be RCS. Mission success, you've gotten all the parts of the craft in the right position. Mission operators and scientists can now take over the data gathering. Good job, well done. Gold award, 5,500 points. Reach the inclined orbit, all that good stuff. Yeah, I like it. Complete the mission with the gold points, save and quit. And that will be that particular mission done, everyone. Very nice indeed. And that, where did it go? There we go, ESA up top. So there we go, Rosetta, max score 5,500, and we got the high score of 5,500 for the gold medal. Next time we will be playing Beppy Colombo. Um, we may do the short mission first, but Beppy Colombo is the launch, the capture, everything about it. Um, but let me know what you think of this Kerbal Space Program video in the comments down below. That will do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next Kerbal Space Program video. Take care.